Hey there guys and welcome back. Just want to go over this uh, arena deck that I drafted real quick. One game because basically every game went like this where the draft just the draft plan went perfect and I think some of you guys might like it. If not it'll be going up with like one of my normal deck profile videos so you'll have that to look forward to but we'll, we'll, we'll get right into this and there we go. I was against a crashing crate leader and I had a whispering hillock. <laughs> which I ended up grabbing him after this draft because I had a couple plans with him like maybe if I got a Mandrake or something to go with the Jenge. but I I also drafted the Shoop which is pretty crazy I think yeah this was the one where I actually didn't mess up the Shoop draft because <laughs> I've done that once now uh but yeah I had Harold Houndsnout, Jenge, Sigdrifa, and Restore in my draft which was pretty crazy so of course, and I had Shani and stuff, so I wanted to actually not just dry pass on blue coin if I got blue coin, which I mostly got blue coin every single game, but that was alright because I just play Herald Hounds now right off the bat, and then Jenga, and that ends up being like a crazy strong play. I mean, unless they kill the Skull or something and cancel out your 11 power bear, you end up getting a lot of value out of that which is really good, but then, like, if you can replay it again after that, you get even more crazy value, because if the Skull hits your Jenge, the one that strengthens by three, you get three more strength on your Jenge. It just ends up being crazy. And I didn't have anybody at pass after I played Wilfred, because some people would... I don't know. I Some people like to pass. Like, if you get blue coin and you play a card, they'll just pass you right after if they're red coin. So that way, they basically flip over... Um, turn one play but this guy didn't and the other guys didn't he doesn't take this long every turn there we go he plays a uh, toad prince right off the bat which is why draw um professional is really good in the arena because like everybody runs old geared and told prince that they can draft them because these are really, those are really good cards so yeah i pop my my skulls i get my one damage on that other skull the buff did go to jenge and i got 34 points in two cards <laughs> And then, I don't remember if this guy passes here or not. I think he does. Because most people just passed, like, right after that. They're like, I'm not playing that. But no, he ended up using his leader. And he ended up being behind. And I was like, okay, I got everything set up that I want to have set up. And he's probably going to drive past me next round. Because that's what they do. They really want that really long round. So, all I wanted to do was play my Dechenge and Wilfred. Uh, but he ends up, yeah, he passes. This one ends up being pretty crazy, too, because of what he drafted, which you'll see in a minute when he actually plays his card to take the round. I think it was just, it's just something small. This guy actually had a pretty decent draft plan. I really oh, like this guy. He's Stefan Scullin's, of course, because Stefan Scullin on a pass is great in Arena. Because then you don't have to worry about Shillard, which I love drafting Shillard because a lot of people will just drop their Stefan Scullin without having it be a pass, and then you can just Shillard their card that they put on top of their deck, and it makes them pretty mad. And I draw into Serret and Restore. I was like, holy crap, really? I throw back Iris because I. I had Skajal to grab me a cursed unit, so I had Iris and Wilfred that he could grab me. So without Iris being in my deck, then there's nothing for him to grab me. And yeah, I definitely wanted him something to grab me. So I just dropped Sarah on the dry pass because the rest of these, I mean, my ointment, my ointment was a dead card in this draft. I actually didn't draft anything. Like I picked up ointment first pick because it was the first best bronze choice. The other ones were like three powers, and then I didn't get anything to ointment in my deck, so that was very, very disappointing. So I ended up throwing ointment back, of course, because that's just a useless card to me. And here I'm like, oh, please don't have Olgeard or like some way to eat my Dejenge or Caretaker, because those were two cards I was really afraid of every time I played this draft. I was like, oh, if they have one of those two, this is going to hurt me, so I'm popping this guy off right away instead of waiting. So I restore him. It's now an 8 power with the two skulls. And yeah, this is where this is where it gets crazy. <laughs> he alchemists, he shows two cards. I'm like, okay, cool, I get to do it. He didn't have the caretaker. I get my Dejenge fret for 
crazy damage here, or crazy points. He ends up getting 21, and I do the one damage to get my bear. I'm at 46. 46 and 2 carbs on the round 3, which is ridiculous. And then he plays the trebuchet, which luckily I have like my lock and stuff, and I was debating on playing my lock because... I didn't know if he was trying to bait out my lock or not because I didn't have many other options unless I used like Cure Mets, Ulzer's Thunder, which I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to use her for the Rackus Venom. And I see that he has the Gales and a Baya because, I mean, you always draft a mage. I didn't actually get a mage in this draft. And I ended up going like 9 and nine and 1. There it is. The Scorch. He uh, used that card to pull any special card and play the Scorch. I was like, okay. Well, I have a shiny. <laughs> Thankfully, I can bring him back out again. And, yeah, do one damage to these two. And there. Now I have a 25 power to Jenge. So I was like, wow. That works out really well. Well, then he has the enough for the one that replays the last special we played. And he scorches him again. I'm like, really? Okay. Well, <laughs> there goes that whole plan. After I was so happy that I got to pull it off. Because this was like my second game. So I end up just locking this thing here because I was like, okay, he's trying to bait it out. I don't want to take the one damage every turn and then end up regretting it when he doesn't even have something else to lock. And he's set up nicely for my Arrakis Venom. Some things so he ends up doing a decent amount of damage with that card because I want to play Priscilla soon. But I end up playing Skajal to get the Iris and throw it back there in between the, the machines so I kill that off and then... The Yennefer Conjurer, so I could hit it with the Rack as Venom, then just get tons of points. G already knows I have a way to deal with that, so I was just hoping for no Coral or that uh, Cursed Unit, because some people do randomly draft that, but usually only have to worry about it if they're running the Ada Leader, where they can spawn a random Cursed Unit, because they'll get that uh, 8 power one that transforms the U Cursed Unit into a copy of itself, and they'll transform your Iris into an 8 power for themselves and that ends up really hurting. So that's something I was always worried about which is why I didn't really want to draft Iris but I ended up drafting her because she wasn't so bad and I had no better choice on that silver draft. So I get the rack as Venom here and I get 18 points off that and then my 25 boost which puts me way ahead again. And I think he plays the next crazy thing here. Was it this card? Or was it the next one? I think maybe it was when he played Gales. Oh no, Uma's Curse. Wait a minute, did he pull it from an Uma's Curse? No. Felipe. Which is a decent card. I mean, that card's not too bad. I think it adds up to like 16. With the random pings. Then I go Prince Zilla, buff all my stuff up. At this point I figured my whole deck was about buffing, so like Scorch was my biggest fear. <laughs> he had final say. I sh sitting there with Shoop. Which I mean I got it I think I ended up getting like eight golds this draft, but no mage. But I did get a Garrison, which helps me pull a mage from my opponent's deck, sometimes because Garrison's great in Arena. So here's he's lining my stuff up and I'm thinking, well wait a minute, is that Lacerate or is that <laughs> something else? So I kind of want to lessen up that row, like a Marigold, a Lacerate. Then ends up getting me Coral, which I do not like Coral, because for reasons like this, like what am I going to transform? What good, does, what good does Coral do me there? What is the best gold choice I had? I mean, very rarely was she, does she ever save me a game, and I already know he's set up for the rack as Venom. So here he ends up playing his other Yennefer Conjurer. He drafted Scorch, the card that searches out any special, and two Yennefer Conjurers to play that Scorch a bunch of times. And then I use my leader and I get Monster's Nest. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, really? <laughs> oh, I have a 25 power card in there. So I end up grabbing Ghoul here, of course, because, I mean, that's that's 30 points, 36 points on that play. 
And I was like, I don't think he has another Scorch. Unless Gales pulls him another Yennefer Conjure or like a Scorch, then I should, that should stick around. He ends up playing Gales. And I forget what he grabs. I don't think he grabs anything really that nice. And it's pretty much over after this. But yeah, that's that's the deck that I basically drafted for Arena once. And I was like, wow, it ended up doing me really well just because I had so many powerhouses. It was ridiculous. And somehow I ran into nobody with a caretaker and nobody with like a way to deal with my Iris when I played her. I play Shoop. I get the, whatever, draw a card one, I think, because that's usually the best one. Or Charm and Enemy, because I really like the Charm and Enemy. Yeah, that's it, guys. So, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that small arena thing. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a good one.